Good morning and welcome back to Botany. Today we're going to talk about the vascular transport system in plants. It's a fancy word. Um, it sounds a lot more complex than it is and it's actually a lot more complex than we are going to get into today. Um, suffice it to say that last week we were studying the roots of plants. Uh, we studied where they transport things. Uh, two, we studied like tubers and um, these places where they store their energy, but we don't even know how they get their energy. Um, and we don't know how they get their energy from a place to a place. And that's what we're going to get into this week. Can't do it all at once. So we're just going to go step by step. So um, as I alluded to uh, a few weeks ago, a plant has a stem and uh, many plants have stems. And these stems, whether it's a tree trunk or whether or not um, it's a flower and then the stem is coming out of the bottom of the flower, these stems are basically like a straw is how you can imagine this thing. Now, the way that a straw works is that you put the straw in a liquid and then your mouth uses the power of your own suction to suck up water or whatever liquid the straw is in, a smoothie, uh, from the place where it is to the place where it's going, which is your mouth. Um, in a plant, it's a little bit different, but that concept is very similar. So you have this straw-like stem, um, which is the basic analogy for what this thing is. Um, but it's going to go both ways because a plant can't just suck up water from the roots and just be set for life. Um, otherwise, what you would have is basically like a water balloon, right? If it was just sucking up water you'd basically have some roots underground that are like straws, and then you'd have a big top-heavy water balloon that's just filled with water. So in the vascular system of plants, it can actually go both ways. Now people and animals, most animals, also have this vascular system where um, they need to transport things throughout their body. Now how does that happen? There's not these tiny little workers that um, carry it from one place to another. But in a sense, there kind of is. What we have is veins in our bodies. We have um, arteries and veins, and those carry blood throughout our body from the very tips of our fingers to our toes all the way up to our brain, uh, with the main parts kind of being our, our heart that's pumping this blood um, constantly so that we have a constant flow of blood. And along the way, our blood picks up certain things that our body needs, right? It picks up oxygen um, from our lungs where we breathe in the oxygen and delivers that oxygen to the rest of our body. Without that, we die. And it also delivers um, water and food, which we eat and drink. And that goes, uh, you know, the basics of it, we know it kind of goes down to our stomachs and we are going to eat and drink these things. And then where does it go from there? Well, um, we have these, um, it, it's complex, and <laughs> we're actually going to get into that in seventh grade, and I don't want to get into it too much now, but I do want you to know that it's very similar to the way that animals also have this digestive system, and that plants um, also do, and we will get into that on Wednesday. Um, but for now, how do they carry the nutrients from place to place? Well, it's usually a series of tubes where this liquid can flow, and so it's not just water that the roots are collecting, it's also nutrients that are in the ground. A lot of times nitrogen or, or other minerals um, or nutrients that plants need, it'll suck up through the roots or the little root hairs. And then this, this system um, of suction is gonna flow through the plant that's gonna flow upwards. Sometimes it's gonna uh, flow up, sometimes it's gonna flow down. Because first, it's going to flow that water up so to carry the water th up throughout the rest of the plant. Um, and it, it uses a pretty complex method called Turger pressure to do this, uh, which basically is a system of pressure. If you squeezed the bottom of a straw, if you had water in the bottom of the straw and you squeezed it, that would be another method of having the water come up through the straw. You keep squeezing that tube and it's going to go up through the straw. Or if you had your mouth at the top of the straw and sucked in some water, that's another method. So turgor pressure is a way of using pressure to push this liquid through the, the veins of the plant, this vascular system. And uh, so what it's going to do is deliver water throughout the plant. And then once it gets to the stem and once it gets to the leaves, some of the water is going to be used up there. And then 
the food that the plant makes is going to be stored throughout the body. Some of the food is going to be used in the leaves, some is going to be used in the stem, and some is actually going to come all the way back down to the roots. And so you have a, a circular system. In fact, they call this sometimes a circulatory system in which you have stuff that's going up, you have stuff that's coming down, you have stuff that's going back up. And so these tubes are going to carry the liquid up through the plant, down through the plant. Now, interestingly enough, in the winter, the food storage system that carries the food uh, from the top of the plant down to the base, from like the leaves and the stem down to the roots to store it, humans can't do this, but plants can do this. Plants can just reverse their, uh, their system. They can re reverse their whole vascular system. And so in other words, they can take those food tubes where they were making food up at the top of the plant and bring it down to the base. And they can take the food that's stored at the base and reverse it back up through those tubes when it gets cold. Plants can do this. People can't do this. In our system, we have blood that pumps through our, our, our arteries and it goes to our veins. We can't just reverse that flow. It's, it's going to go in a circle constantly on a loop, and we're not going to reverse it. I, I don't know what would happen, but people don't really know how to do it, as far as I know. Um, so the vascular system is basically just a method of transportation to get things from one part of the plant to the other. At the base of this vascular system, the plant is going to want to take water and suck that water up through the roots and take it up to the stem. And if, it, if the plant has leaves, take it to the leaves. And then when it makes food in the stem or in the leaves, it's going to take that food and store some of it there, continue to uh, grow more plant tissues and make the plant even bigger, and then possibly store this down below. And you can see this sometimes if you uh, pick a dandelion, say, and you see this like white milky sap oozing out. Well, that's because what you're seeing is the vascular system in play. It's like, hey, where'd the top of our entire plant go? We're trying to feed the, the top of the plant, the leaves and the flowers, and now, um, now we can't. You can see it when you um, pick a head of lettuce and you see that, uh, that milky sap. You can see it when you pick most things. You can actually look and see these little tubes and tubules, these tiny tubes. Uh, so try that out. Again, don't just pick stuff randomly, but if you're picking stuff from the garden to harvest it, take a peek, turn the thing sideways, really uh, look into it pretty deeply and see if you can see hey, how is this thing transporting from the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top? Um, that, is, that is an essential element of plants. Um, now, what it's going to transport, we'll get into soon. So thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you tomorrow.